Hello, in this video we're going to talk about how to use MATLAB to plot electric potential due to like, a number of charges. So what we know is that the electric potential can be written as the sum of certain constant times the charge divided by the position of the charge. And we also know that the electric field is equal to minus the gradient of the, our electric potential. Okay, so what we want to do is a function, elect, I'm going to call it electric field, electric field that takes as a parameter a vector of a vector p of x, p of y, q and containing the position along the x-axis, the y-axis and the charge of each particle so x, p x is containing the position of, along the x-axis y along the y-axis q is containing the charges of each particle and then s is just a parameter for the graph so what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to create a function electric field that's going to take in four parameters and we're going to define x, y and our electric potential e pod. So it, Nargin tells us how many parameters the d user gave as input. So if it's different than four then we're going to call an error and it also if the two vectors are of different length then we're going to call an error again the step size we're going to take its absolute value because maybe it put a minus and now we're going to take the size of each vector we'll need it for after and what we're going to do here is we're going to define the domain that we want to plot how are we going to do that? It's going to depend on the entries. Let's say that you give the function this this input. Uh, so we're going to have a particle at the position 1, 1, a particle at the position 1, 2, minus 2, minus, minus 2, 2, minus 3, minus 3. What I'm doing here is that I'm looking for the maximum of the absolute value of these two vectors and I'm adding just a 2 because I'm, in this case let's say I'm going to plot from minus 5 to 5 because the maximum value is minus 3 so I'm just going to plot to 5 you can change this to, to whatever value you want now we're just going to proceed and do this electric potential we're going to take k as one for the moment because then you can scale it as you want so what we're going to do is we're going to define the first electric potential of the first particle taking the first charge divided by the position of this first charge and because we're working on the plane x and y the position is written as the square root of x minus our position to the square plus y minus our position to the square okay and then we're going to use a for loop to just do all the sum and we're going to do it until we're done with the vector of the position so until we have added all the charges at this point we're going to have a symbolic expression, a symbolic uh, function of all the potentials and we're just going to convert it into a function handle using MATLAB function so here val is our electric potential and what we want to do is taking the gradient so we're going to do the gradient of e pod Notice that is a gradient of our symbolic um, electric 
potential because gradient works with a symbolic input. Then we're gonna scale it because otherwise it will be so small. Like in reality, this constant k is sort of big, but we can give it whatever whatever value we want. I just keep it around 10 because it works nice with the graph. And then we notice that our vector E, our electric potential, is a vector that has two components, the, y com the x component and the y component. So to graph it, we're going to have to do a mesh grid. And here we're going to use our parameter S that is going to be the step size of that mesh grid. And notice that we're plotting from minus L to L. So we're just going to create X and Y, our mesh, our grids, and we're going to convert our electric potential to a function handle so we can evaluate it at this mesh grid. So here in this two lines, I'm converting the symbolic electric field into a function handle, and here I'm evaluating it at our mesh grid. So AX and EY are just our uh, electric field at each point between minus L and L on the x-axis and y-axis. Here I'm just doing some scaling, which is sort of complicated because I don't... the, the vectors that are really close to the charges so here, if, if R is really, really small, our potential is going to be huge. And in fact, as R goes to zero, our potential goes to infinity. And our electric field is going to be really, really big. So here I'm trying to scale uh, those vectors. So I'm trying to scale the big vectors a lot and trying to leave the small vectors untouched. And what I'm going when I, once I'm done with the scaling, here I'm done with the scaling, I'm just gonna plot our our vector field using quiver. And if you don't want the scaling you can replace this EX and EY by the capital E X and capital E Y but you will see that it looks better with the scaling so here at this point we have already grabbed our vector field and we're just gonna scale it again and modify the arrows and, and set up and give it a color you can change the color as you want and now we want to plot our potentials together. We want to plot equipotential lines in the same graph. So we use hold on and we use ease contour to plot. S notice that we're going to give it our uh, function handle val that we had defined over here, val, which is actually um, function handle of our electric potential and we're going to give it the domain to plot and we're going to give it how many uh, equipotential lines we want I want this to depend on uh, the domain and also the number of points and of course we can set a constant that we want um, so this is going to depend on these two parameters and we can modify here k we can give it a, a value of 40 or whatever uh, so you can see the change and here I'm going to use um, set to put the level step to at 2 so um, if the potential if the potential changes with 2 it's going to draw 1 it's going to jump 2 more it's going to draw another line that way the, um, the quick potential are going to be sort of well distributed around our plane and then I'm just going to label label our graph and our axis and I'm going to plot our charges as uh, points so I'm going to plot all the points as charges all, all the charges as points
points in the inner plane. So let's just check it, compile, and now let's use this as an example. We're going to initialize our vectors that we want to plot. And then we're going to just call electric field of px, py, q, and just a step size of 0 0.1. Now you see what this is. So now we can see that we had um, three positive charges at one, 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 two, minus two, two, and one negative charge is minus three, minus three. And here we have our three positive charges and uh, our negative charge. You can distinguish by the color of the um, of the contrary lines of the equipotentials here it says that it has positive potential and here negative potential and all these lines are equipotentials and the little arrows are the electric field at each point you can play with the with the code and make it do whatever you want so now you can see that it's plotted from minus 5 to 5 and from minus 5 to 5. If I give it, if I change, uh, for example, my, my p of x, let's say p of x is equal to, now I'm going to say 1, 1, uh, minus 2, minus 7, and you call it again. see that now it plotted from minus 9 to 9 and I only move this one so these other charges remain the same you can play with this you can actually do some pretty pretty cool things you can plot circles or any other figures and um, I'll do another video um, showing you how to use this to plot um, something that could resemble a cylindrical capacitor or some other fun stuff okay I'll post the code in the description I hope you like it thanks for watching